Hello, my name is Marcus Klar. I'm a brand strategist and service designer at the Brand Manual. Over the past 15 years, I've worked with government organizations, brands, companies, startups, schools, universities, all with the goal of improving their user experience in using design thinking to improve products and services so that they work the way people expect them to work. Part and parcel of this has been obviously digitalization of how to make service that used to be analog, that you used to do manually, how to make them effective, how to make them work for customers, for users in the digital sphere, and by way of that, improve their experience and the efficiency of the business. In the following presentation, I'll try to give you a short introduction to design thinking and service design and how this applies to digitalization in your business field. Digitalization and design thinking. What is it and why is it important? First of all, let's look at terminology. Uh, digitization and digitalization often get confused and in a way it's not important as long as you know what you're talking about but if you're having a conversation with people then it's good to understand that there's a difference between these two things. Digitization is the conversion of uh, text or pictures or sound or whatever into a digital format, something that can be processed by a computer, for example a, a registration form for a hotel. Digitalization, however, is the adaptation of whole systems or processes that to make them operated by computers and use of internet, which means a booking engine. Somebody can from Estonia book a hotel in Spain and get a confirmation that yes, this room has been booked. And then you, are, you have paid and you can confidently actually arrive. So this is what we are talking about when we're talking about digitalization. And design thinking, or as it's also called human-centered design, is a, a very simple concept in itself. It's the question about putting yourself into your customers, your users' shoes, and looking at the world from their perspective. For a simple example, if you have a sign on the door saying, I'll be back in 15 minutes, that creates a whole bunch of interesting questions for a person who comes to the door. The first one is that when did the 15 minutes start and when will they end? And what am I supposed to do in the meantime? And if it just started, should I stand here or should I look for something else? Or if it's urgent, I mean, this sign really doesn't help at all because it gives no information whatsoever but the person who put the sign there knew exactly what it meant. They looked at their watch, said, okay, in 15, I'll be back. And that's the problem with organization-centric thinking is just optimizing their own process for themselves. But if you have a sign saying, I'll be back at 15.30, then everybody coming to the door knows that, okay, I have to wait this much time or I have a second choice to make. And the second sign is human-centered, it's, it's user-centered. It's looking at the world from their point, point of view and offering them information that is actionable, something they can do something with, rather than just, oh, now I depend on you, waiting for you to come back in 15, but I don't even know when that is. And if we're looking at digitalization in this context, digitalization is effective for repetitive and repeat processes. Something that you do often or something you do the same way every time. That's the goal of digitalization, especially for, for small businesses, looking at where can you save time, where can you save effort by having basically people do it themselves. Because the goal of digitalization is really do it yourself for customers. Instead of waiting for you to offer me a service, standing in line to talk to somebody to fill in a form or get some help, I can go online and get the help for myself without waiting for anybody. And, and the, the benefit of that, obviously, is I can do that at any time of day. I can do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I don't depend on a service provider's schedule or workload to get help. 
And this really does improve efficiency. I mean, for both the service provider, all these repeat tasks are automated and they're done by the customer and nobody has to wait on anybody else. And yes, the obvious question is, and the obvious thing is that in some cases you don't want to do that because the human touch is very important. But again, you have to understand where the compromises are. The, the self-service checkouts at the supermarkets, they can be very frustrating or they can be very well made. And they really do work very well when they're very well made. If they're not very well made, they just create more problems for the staff that then has to try to answer those questions as well. So you have to be careful. But applying this design thinking, this idea of, okay, what's good for the customer and looking at it from how they actually use things allows you to design things right rather than just design the right thing. Like the self-service checkout, I mean, who's had experience with them has probably had good experiences and bad experiences. You can make them very badly. And this same smart uh, remote control that all the TVs have nowadays is a, is, a, is a super example of, you know, design the right thing, but it's not designed right because nobody uses the features on it. Most people use, you know, two buttons, three buttons on it at maximum, and uh, it is just a confusing piece of hardware. So, so understanding how people use it looking at it from their point of view and then designing the service that you want to digitalize will work much much better but it requires a little bit of research and understanding what is needed for customers isn't rocket science you have to however take some time and observe how people actually act these kinds of situations where people run across lawns and take shortcuts are visible across cities everywhere. And it's not a user mistake. It's a mistake of the person, the people that plan the sidewalks. And that's the way you have to approach these things. And when you're trying to digitalize, looking at your service, you also have to look at actually human behavior how your customers act in certain situations and just asking them for okay how would you do this and how would you prefer it is not going to give you the answer it's very very important to understand that you have to go out and observe how people actually act and then ask them why did you do it this way what were you thinking what are you looking for to achieve and why 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 because if you ask from a questionnaire and people will answer the questions that you know to ask but they won't answer the questions you don't know how to ask and they often won't do what they say because there are questions that people presume the right answer is this one and they will not answer anything else. For example, today, nowadays, I mean, buying ecological vegetables and, and food is, is the right thing to do. So if you put that on the questionnaire, do, would you prefer eco food? Everybody says yes. If you go to the supermarket and look at what's in people's baskets, the answer is overwhelmingly still, well, I'll buy the cheaper thing. And that is the, the, the fundamental truth that you have to go and observe people and then talk to them and understand why they're doing things, not just what they say they will do. One of the key ways of doing this is really to map the process whereby people act. This is called journey mapping or, or process mapping, but the, the, guess, the, the goal of it is basically to understand the steps that the customer or the user takes and then what are the steps that you take as an organization, what steps someone else takes that you are dependent on, for example, some internet platform that you are going to have to buy from someone else. What does that do? Is there an underlying system to it? For example, a payment uh, clearing house? Are there some processes required? For example, uh, know your customer protocols where you have to check IDs. All these things add up to a process and by mapping this process but looking at it from where the customer does things and why they do things you can design and 
a process you can map it on paper once you have it on paper you can start looking at okay which bits and pieces can be digitalized first second third until the whole process can be digitalized and you can actually have people do something else rather than repetitive tasks that become boring anyway over time but you have to be very critical when you do this the fact that it makes business sense yes we could save a lot of money doing it it may make technical sense you you can do this you have the skills but would people want it you have to take that into consideration because the difference between a good self-service payment terminal in the supermarket and a bad one is the last question do people want it if it's not looked at from how people use things and want things it's not going to work it's just going to create more problems and that really is customer centricity and that is the the essence of design thinking it's taking one step back and putting yourself in the customer's shoes and say okay but what how would i do this and why would i want it and why would i do this and this and this and when you do this research it is very common to focus on the majority of your customers because those are the majority of their customers which is true but the majority of the customers tend to be customers by accident they've had a reasonable experience they don't see a reason to change but they don't have very strong opinions whether for or against while doing user research it's really good to work with people that know why they love you or even know why they hate you because they have very definite opinions and they can say why why this is good why this is bad and by using their input you can design much better services than focusing on the majority of people that tend to be customers by accident because they happen to be where they are and use the service that is available and because it's good enough don't really make any major decisions whether to change or not and the example for this is, is very simple if you design for example a city to be accessible to people in wheelchairs totally accessible that every street every sidewalk every doorway every building everything is really accessible uh, then yes it will make life better for the people in wheelchairs but if you consider the broader ecosystem ecosystem there the broader ecosystem is people uh, elderly people people with uh, roller skates skateboards uh, small kids elderly people that have a hard time accessing stairs there's a large mass of people that would also benefit so by focusing on extremes you develop specific solutions that work for a very broad group but when you focus on everyone you tend to create solutions that don't really matter to anyone so i hope this has given you a short introduction and understanding of design thinking and how you can apply it to your business in the future. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to write or call and good luck. <laughs>